On Larry King Now, the cast of Suits, Patrick Adams and Meghan Markle. The show is about mentorship, and from my point of view, it's about a young guy who's sort of trying to make his way in the world. On what makes the show so successful? The sexiness of the show and the intrigue of the show is the fact that these characters are so layered and, and people really relate to them. Plus, you are a calligrapher? <laughs> me right now, let me, I'm gonna write the same thing. thing. So that's, that's what happens when a four-year-old writes the same thing. <laughs> It's all next on Larry King Now. Welcome to another edition of Larry King Now. We're still in New York, and tonight we're talking about suits, not the kind who work upstairs here in this hotel or at the network but a brilliant television show. USA Network's award uh, nominated the critically acclaimed top-rated original drama series. I'm joined by two of the stars. They are Patrick J. Adams, he plays Mike Ross, and Meghan Markle, who plays Rachel Zane. The third season currently airs Tuesday nights, 10 p.m. on the USA Network. Say someone had never seen Suits, we all know what a suit is. How would you describe the show? Uh, I would say the show is basically about mentorship, and from my point of view, it's about a young guy who's sort of trying to make his way in the world. So over the course of the first two seasons, you've had a, a kid who really didn't know his way around- In a law firm. Uh, around the law firm, in a, in a high stakes corporate, New York corporate law firm. He uh, sneaks his way into the into the firm. He doesn't, never went to law school. Um, he's not a lawyer. He's not actually a lawyer. He's lied to get the job, and now he's finding himself trying to make his way in that it world. It is a comedy. It, it is It is both. I think it's what is commonly referred to as a drama. Dramedy now. Dramedy. It is a drama. It is a dramedy. And who, 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 Megan, is Rachel? Uh, Rachel is the paralegal at the firm. Seductive? I don't know. Do you think so, Larry? I, I, uh... Just, just a comment. <laughs> just to get out there. Uh, no, I think, um, I think she's, you know, she's really savvy. She has this encyclopedic knowledge of the law, and she is sort of the go-to girl for... Um, everything that people need at the firm. She also happens to be the love interest to Mike Ross, and uh, she's the woman behind the man. Every time Mike needs anything to happen, she's the one that actually. Are they helps living make together? Not yet. This no. season is actually at the end of last season. Was the first time that he had been fully honest with her about uh, about his secret, and so now into the third season, they have a lot more material where they're where they're becoming closer. Well, why is this show? It's the biggest show on USA. Why is it working? I think it's so successful because of the characters, really. I mean, I've said it before. I, I think the way that they're constructed, if it was uh, a show about a hospital or about a school or anything else, it really doesn't matter. Obviously, Every place has suits. Every place has suits, but I, re I really do think like the sexiness of the show and the intrigue of the show is the fact that these characters are so layered and, and people really relate to them. They know someone or they want to know someone like they see on that show. So I think that's what brings people back. And, um, and then the New York of it all is pretty enticing. The promos are hysterical. <laughs> we, have fun. we have a lot of fun it with that stuff. It entices you to want to watch yes. the show. How'd you get the part? Uh, it was the ba I, I, it was the basic LA situation. I'd been auditioning for a long time, and then I got fired from a job uh, a couple months before this script came through. And fired? I got fired from a job, which is you know happens pretty regularly. For ineptness. But for just total ineptness. <laughs> uh, ineptness. <laughs> the, uh, a common what? thing that happens with show? shows. It was a it was a sitcom. And uh, I, I, I think I'm funny when I maybe want to be, but with this particular script, I wasn't particularly funny at all. So, so the you were table out of work. Rate, I was out of work, I got fired, and I thought, I think I might just give this up and move on and try something else. And then this script came through, and the pilot episode of this show is about a young guy, you know, finding his way in a situation where he gets to look at his peers and say, give me this job, give me this shot, I've worked so hard for this. And so I was sort of primed for that for that moment to sit in front of a bunch of network executives and say, trust me, I've got this, just give me my shot. They hire you right out they, the audition? I, it was almost right away. How did you get the job? Uh, just went in an audition for it. I think Patrick was the first one uh, who was cast. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'd gone and auditioned, I thought it was one of the worst auditions I had ever done and didn't realize that behind closed doors they disagreed with me on that fact and brought me back to test for it. I tested with Patrick. I was behind that closed door when they, dis <laughs> when they disagreed with her. She came in, we had known each other from a pilot, another pilot, failed pilot long mm. ago that we had worked on together. And so when she came in, everybody, you know, she left. I knew she was nervous and thought she hadn't done well. And as soon as the door closed, their eyes went wide and they were like, well, that's it, and they're done. Can that work that you think someone could be a lawyer without being a lawyer? 
Well, the tough part for this relationship is she's working so hard in the show to become a lawyer. And so, you know, while we're falling in love on the show, she's also got to wrestle with the fact that, um, you know, that, that I got into this job without doing half the work that she's going to have to do to get to where she's at. So that's a big part of the third season. And, and do you have a conflict with Gabriel? Consistently, and always, right. so on that, and off the screen. That's the, con- <laughs> uh, we, the, the co- we have just reached a conflict at the end of the first season where I've really betrayed um, Harvey's trust, his character, Harvey Specter. I've betrayed his trust significantly, and that's one thing that you don't do to him for that character. Trust is everything. So uh, when you come and find us at the beginning of the third season, we're two people who are very much at odds, and this bromance that has sort of been a big part of the show is really at risk. Do you, uh, do you like your character? Oh, I love her. I mean, you I... You don't have to like her, right? I mean... I don't have to. I, you know, I think there's something with any character that you play. You just want to find something that you connect to about them and you don't have a, a judgment about it. But I happen to really love Rachel. I love how ambitious she is and savvy. And, um, yeah, she sort of becomes someone that I could see as a friend, which makes it a lot sweeter to play. You like your guy? I do, yeah. I really... I, I admire he's him. He's a fraud. Yeah, he's a fraud, but he's somebody, I think, who kind of embodies the American dream in some small <laughs> way. You know, you have people who drop out of school. You have the Mark Zuckerbergs of the world. You have guys who have really, like, st- you know, Steve Jobs, people who have, who, have, who have done remarkable things without sort of playing the game as it's supposed to be played necessarily and going through school. So I think that there's something really rewarding about playing somebody who didn't take the the typical path, but who cares just as much about about what he does and doing it properly. And, uh, you know, the, now the show is really about finding out how he is going to legitimize what he's doing. Does everyone get along on Suits? Yeah, I mean, I think that's what I think that's what people really feel about our show is that the chemistry that we all have off camera mm-hmm. just translates. Is that important? I think so. Yeah. I think that. Yeah. I mean, I think there no and people are always trying to figure out the alchemy of what makes a great show and why it's successful. I think it's almost impossible, but the one key ingredient is you've got to have people who respect each other and get along. I don't think you always have to get along. You can have disagreements, but you have to be able to uh, enjoy each other and support each other's decisions. And it's way. always got to be on the page, right? It's still the script. It's yeah. still the script. Yeah. Though we do have some, we take some liberties with that and yeah. ad lib and play yeah. around a lot. Yeah, yeah. and the writers. Yeah, yeah, it's a big part of the show. The culture of the show is us getting to play. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Back with more of the stars of Suits after this. Welcome back. We're, uh, we're talking with two of the stars of uh, Suits, Meghan Markle, who plays uh, Rachel Zane, and uh, Patrick Adams, who plays Mike Ross. They are also the love interest in this Drama, what do you call it? Dramedy. Dramedy. Uh, this, dramedy. This dramedy, which is a hit show <laughs> on the USA Network in its third season. Uh, you're from Toronto, right? I am, yes, born and raised. Uh, the two of you play, are you, you, you played together before, right? So we did this pilot um, called Good Behavior, mm-hmm. where I played uh, twins, um, and Megan was the love interest for one of the uh, for one of the twins. Are you single? I am not, uh, I am, I am, I you're am not, not sure? married, but not single. You, you, start me again. I'm not married, but I'm, I'm not single, right? That's the matter. I have someone. a girlfriend, but we're not married. I see. She's on another television program. So the two of you are not involved off the show? No. No, no, no. 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 That, would, that would never work. So why is there so much chemistry here? I think because we got we knew each I'm other early something. on. I'm You're picking up on something. Well, I think TV sees us a certain way, right? We'd done this uh, show for ABC years ago, and it, very similarly, my character was polished, and he played this sort of rough around the edges guy. Suits, same sort of thing. So. I think, I think we were natural. in a situation, too, when we worked together the first time. There was that, like, uncomfortable getting to know each other stuff. And then this time going into it, we realized, like, we have to get to know each other and become friends very quickly. So, Is your girlfriend in the business? She is. She's on a show called Pretty Little Liars over down in Los Everything Angeles. Everything you deal with is lying here. What? There's you always lying. Liar. I have lied. I've not said one true thing in this whole interview. <laughs> this whole thing of it. It's it. You know, we used to do that? Walt the map out. Lying every friend. interview? He, he would... He would, just to make, it is a true story, just to make interviews interesting, he would lie. Oh, that's oh, So he would tell one guy, my father came from Poland, yeah. and we were very poor. That's Another funny. guy said, I was very rich, I was raised in Illinois. He would just, <laughs> and it would confuse people, biographers. Did he do this going, to you? He yeah. No, he told me that he did it oh, to others. So he was giving you the straight scoop, but everybody else How do I know? <laughs> <laughs> but I like them. Uh, you had been fired, you get this job. You, is there security now in this business? Do you feel secure in an insecure world? As much as you can, I think. You know, I think, look, this show, we've, uh, it's, 
we're so lucky that it's doing so well, and I think that we have a few good seasons still in us for this show. So for that, I mean, my God, as an actor, all you want to do is work, and you want to work on good things with good people. So we are pretty fortunate to have that. So I would say, yeah, there's a great sense of security. But I think at some point, also, if you want to continue to sort of stay present in this kind of work, you never want to get too comfortable. And so there's a there's a part of it that we're secure in this moment right now. I mean, I couldn't pay my rent before I got this job, so that security is nice. But <laughs> but uh, moving forward forward into other things, there's so many new things that you want to try that if you're not forcing yourself into a zone where you feel a little insecure and a little uncomfortable, then you're probably, you know, not pushing yourself hard enough. Are you surprised that it's a hit? I, yeah, how this could It's such a roll of the dice. Completely. It's a, I mean, you just never know. Just like the pilot that we had done years ago together, or the mm -hmm. countless other pilots that I had done that never got picked up. You really don't know, yeah. no matter how good the script is. So. And not only here, you know, we both traveled around the world to do press for this show. So to go to different... Uh, Megan was in Hong Kong last year. I was in Singapore, Malaysia, and the, the Philippines. Shows are, oh, shows so are everywhere, yeah. South Africa. So it's it's amazing to see people from different cultures and different places that, that relate to the show about, you know, people working a law firm in New York, and I think that's a testament to it's really not about it being a law show, but it's about being characters in a working environment. And the writers, directors let you ad lib? They do, which is, I mean, it's so great to have that it's sort of freedom. Kind of strange, though, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, not, I don't know if it's strange. It's just sort of, it's, it's fun. Well, not but a it, lot of but shows. It's, you know, it's a nice I think it's, there's an inherent trust that, like, when we're on set, we'll always do it the way that it's written, but sometimes when you're on set, you're finding, oh, there's maybe a funnier way of doing this, or maybe we can get at the same thing by saying something a little different, and so they let us try it. Do you learn a lot about the law doing this? Do you have a legal advisor? You know, on we set, don't. we don't. No. No. We have, we have so even that's a fraud. Yeah. <laughs> right. There's no legal advisor. If you're looking for a show that's an accurate portrayal of law, Suits is probably not the place to be turned. When you have to deal with law terminology, is that hard? No, I love that stuff. Yeah. That's my. That's what I have fun. And, and every time that comes up, I feel like I learn a little bit, a little bit about the law. And I can definitely appro approach cases that are out in the in the public with a little. I'm, I take more interest in them now because I try and understand what's really happening. Um, but so you know about affidavits and discovery and tort mm -hmm. and tort yeah. law summons yes. and yep. yeah. But I think there are a few moments in our show where we've even almost changed the U.S. Constitution to, to support a plot line. So <laughs> this is where I'm saying we've just kind of carefully... Does know, it ever skirt. get really serious? Do you ever defend a murderer? Well, that's yeah, funny you bring that up. In this, in this season, we're dealing with a case that I think is by far the most serious case we've dealt with, which is a big... Um, a woman who owns a big oil company that gets wrapped up in a murder case overseas. Um, and, uh, and, and so, yeah, we're defending a fairly a serious stretch? situation. You know, I think, I think to a lawyer watching the show, they'd think it was a little bit of a stretch. I think there are going to be a lot of things in it that people say, well, that's not how that would work. And obviously a case like that would drag on for years. Um, you know, but on our show, I think it's about how it affects the characters that you know. And that, right. I think, makes it real for people. Like Perry Mason, all cases are exactly. so one hour. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We'll be right back. Don't go away. We're back with the stars of uh, Suits on the USA Network. It's in its third season, uh, and we're having a lot of fun uh, talking to them. Uh, Megan, you uh, you are a calligrapher. <laughs> I I, uh, I I used to be. Yes, that was. Um, I went to all girls Catholic school. Handwriting class was one of those. And lost how do arts. calligraphers get paid? I mean, who, who employs well, calligraphers? Um, <laughs> you know, it's it's wedding funny. reception people. Absolutely, wedding wedding reception people. Yes, also. please let her do oh, it. Yeah. Check this out. Write this something. Is, you use, um, use my name or anything you want. Just I don't write things down in front of her anymore. I'm <laughs> no, I don't. So know. Do you uh, have a side uh, talent? Uh, I'm a photographer. Oh. I have all sorts of things, but nothing as impressive as this. Are you an amateur photographer? I would say you know borderline amateur professional. I have a lot of gear. I, I love to shoot. I shoot nonstop, but, but I don't make money doing it. But I did survive as a young actor taking headshots. Oh. oh. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, why oh, shows? Oh, do tell. It's <laughs> out of nowhere. But that, I mean, you Here, let me have write, the right now, pen let me, and I'm you do the right same thing. thing for Actually, you, Patrick just to has give really you a cool sense handwriting, though. I oh, oh, my day is made. Of. <laughs> You want to go pick the furniture? I, let's do that. <laughs> Paint colors, swatches. So that's that's what happens when a four-year-old writes the same thing. <laughs> he loves Larry King. Now we have a problem. This uh, is a different kind of triage. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever think of leaving the business? Yes. There were so many disappointments. Regularly, in. regularly. Yeah. It's a very what difficult What kept you business. going back? You get rejection. Rejection is part of the game, right? Yeah. 
Constantly. I think that's kind of what keeps you in it, though, too. There's that part of you that, like, every time you get rejected, there's a little part of you that's like, well, I need to prove that, like, these people aren't right about me. But it's also just the love of the game, you know? I, I, I love being an actor. I love acting. And so even when I wasn't being paid well for it, I was still doing it, still doing theater. I was still producing theater, still directing theater. So at some point, you just sort of to start laughing at the rejection, and then something changes. But I also think we're, I mean, all things considered, we're so lucky because some people are trying to do this for 20 years and still waiting tables, you know? This has been a, it feels like a slow burn, but really, in, in the grand scheme of things, doing this for six, seven years and then having a show like this with this level of success is crazy. Someone had said to me a long time ago, don't give it five minutes if you're not gonna give it five years. Mm -hmm. So I'd say that five-year mark, I was really Close. eager. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was You waited on tables? Uh, I didn't actually, I did this. You know, wearing a little white tube sock on your hand, writing things out. That's my favorite. You ever sell your too. photos? Uh, uh, yeah, I've, I've sold a bunch of photos and uh, I'm in the process of doing my first show, which I'm gonna do up in Toronto. So, wow. Yeah, I'm excited. It's, uh, it's a whole different process. Usually my photos have just been for me, my family, my friends, and then I got to a point where I had amassed this just huge collection of photography. Most of my photography now, because I'm on set, is with my phone, you know, these phones. They say that that's now the best camera, the i5. Yeah. Yeah, it's great a great camera. Quality. You know, it does it's a great things. camera. Yeah, it's a, I mean, it, it's, a, it, it's a great camera because it's the camera you have in your pocket. Um, I love shooting with a Hasselblad, but I carry this thing around and it's a tank, do you know? So it's if I, it really just depends what you're shooting and where you are. How did you become a calligrapher? Uh, you know, I, I, oh, actually, it's funny. My uh, girlfriend from college, I'd written a thank you note to her mom after staying with them uh, for Thanksgiving, and her mom called me and said, you know what, I'm doing a dinner party. You, can you do the place cards? And what you, what I soon realized about calligraphy is it's its own advertisement, mm -hmm. right? Because one person sees a place card and says, who wrote that? Or one person gets a thank you note, and so. Was this natural? You always had a good handwriting? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I was fortunate to have pretty good handwriting and then monetized it <laughs> for a bit. Do right. people recognize you on the street now? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. The is game has changed. heartwarming? <laughs> or was that like the word for it? Um, yeah, I, I mean, of course, it's so flattering. It's so lovely. And at the same time, I think it um, it's the eye-opener that our lives have really changed, you know, to go from having some anonymity to now the privacy is gone. But it's, it's great that the show is so successful, and that's part of what comes with it. It's also like we're not at that stage where it's it gets in the way. You know, you're not Brad Pitt. You're not walking down the street, and people aren't mobbing you. It's just right now, it's just people who kind of come up once in a while and go, oh, we really love the show. Thank you so much. You have guest uh, stars appear on the show, right? Yeah. Great yeah. guest stars. We've like? Michelle Fairley. Do you watch Game of Thrones? We have a ton oh, of Game of Thrones people this year. Well, two, a ton. <laughs> two is a, a lot to get from one them. show. Uh, <laughs> so we, we're just poaching their cast, apparently. And uh, and then along the way, I mean, who else have we had? Eric Close. We get just terrific actors, people mm. who just fit the parts. So Anyone well. you'd love to work with? Oh, my goodness. So many on the show or otherwise. Um, I keep trying to get Dustin to come from luck, I you want to get Dustin Hoffman. That'd be great. Too. Yeah, he's a terrific guy. I think it's gonna be a little bit of a hard sell, but I've tried. But Dustin is, everything has to be perfect with yeah, Dustin, it right? has to be very Let's perfect. do it again. Our, our seven day episode might become a two and a half week, two <laughs> month long episode. I did a movie with Dustin, and uh, uh, one hour became seven. <laughs> exactly. Let's try it this way. Okay. Well, and he also yeah. loves to tell stories too. And he'll just see. He'll just oh, stop and tell a story. And you know, no crew is going to go. No, no, no. We don't have time for this because yeah. it's the best. You know, the best old Hollywood story you've ever heard. Do you take direction well? I'd like to think so. Um, I grew up in the industry. My dad uh, is a lighting director and just recently retired. So for me, the crew is what I know better than the cast and and the actors. So I try. You grew to up be in L.A. Good. Yeah, born and raised. So I tried. high school. Immaculate Heart, right at Western and Franklin, beneath AFI. Catholic school. Yes. They hit your finger with a ruler? They did no. not. They were rebellious, <laughs> uh, rebellious nuns that uh, were at that school, so it was very different than You most went to normal school in Toronto? I did, normal school. Well, I don't mean Public Catholic school. school is abnormal. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with more of the stars of Suits after this. Your show is active on social media, right? Mm -hmm. You dig, are you, are you into all that? You know, I think we're both in the place where we're trying to figure out how it all fits. It, it, you can't 
I think, I don't know if you can have a hit show these days without being really engaged in, in that, but on a personal level, it's this thin line of, of, like Megan was talking about before, is giving up privacy. And so there's this level of you want to support the show and you want to promote the show and you want people to be able to have this sort of intimate way of connecting to us on the show, but then there are times where it, on your private life it feels like this is something I don't want to do. So it's I hard think to you can more. tip us coming up on an upcoming episode, a little hint. A little, a little. You know tease. how much you've done, right? Yes, we are actually. We do sixteen episodes in the season, so we're at the ninth right now. Ninth. We're starting the ninth, yeah. Starting the ninth when we come back from hiatus. I so mean, we're going to have some surprises. Lots of surprises. I think. Uh, I think fans will really enjoy the evolution of Mike and Rachel's relationship. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Sort of what happens there. Okay, we have some social media questions for you. April Squint. Great <laughs> April name. Squint. April Great Squint. Name. April Squint. April Squint. What has been your favorite scene to film together, and where do you see the characters going? Hmm. You have a favorite scene? Gosh, we've had so many. What, are you, what is your favorite scene? That we've I feel like together? saying the last scene of last season. We we, we were very them. intimate in a file room in the office. Uh, there was a sex scene. It was the scene. culmination, it was the first, of, a culmination what of what people made a lot in the wanted file. to see um, happen between Mike and Rachel, and it happened in a file room. It happened in a file room. Classy, classy. Oh, and that was your Anna. favorite scene. It was my favorite scene because it was the one that scared me the most. Again, going back to what scares you, it was we were terrified. We had never done any. I had never done anything like that. I don't think you'd ever done no, anything like never. that. Um, it was a long scene. Not only was it a sex scene in a file room, which would be enough to scare anybody, but right before it, there was a sort of culmination of a lot of the emotional stuff that had happened on the show. We were standing up or on the floor? We were standing up. <laughs> <laughs> Against uh, the stacks, Larry. I mean, it was yeah, nice. it was for real. Uh, at Kia Kim, Megan. Oh, by the way, where do you see the characters? in five years, Let's say the show goes that long. Will they marry? I think it's a good question. I, think that's I, think I'm, I would only imagine that that's what they're going to build towards. Um, Will he get a degree? I, I think that he has to become legitimate somehow, some, sometime. At Kia Kim, Megan is a traveler of the world. Would you come to Indonesia with the Suits cast? I would love to, of course. I've never been to Indonesia. Never. No, that would be incredible. Your show is big in Indonesia. Yes, it's gotten really They love you in Indonesia. Yeah, yeah, We're huge in Indonesia. Huge in Indonesia. We play a game called If You Only Knew, okay? Remember your first kiss? You want me to tell you my first yeah, kiss? Yeah, well, well, I know. Well, well, Tanya was in my backyard, Tanya Luckhart. Tanya Luckhart. Tanya Luckhart. How old were you? We found each other on Facebook recently, actually. Social media of bringing people together. Did. How old were uh, you? I was probably 13. 14 years Late. old. Mm. Wow, sorry, Larry. No, I mean, <laughs> well, I so my mine, time. It's mine a was 20. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, what about you, Megan? Joshua Silverstein. A Jew? Yes. <laughs> One of my people. Part of the tribe. Here, yeah, uh, how to be in LA? It, it wasn't it was a, a, it wasn't a Catholic school. It wasn't a Catholic school. No, Joshua Silverstein, I was 13. Where yeah, was it? Well. Where did it occur? Uh, it was like a summer camp. And I kissed oh, him. Summer camp. You summer kissed camp. him. Of course. Now, course. he found out what happened to her. Did you find out what happened to Joshua? No. You I, don't know. I don't know what happened to Joshua. If you're watching Joshua, Joshua, Joshua this is what you missed. <laughs> <laughs> Remember your first audition? Uh, my first audition. Oh, wow, that's a great question. Um, I, I think so, yeah. It was, uh, it was for Sleepless in Seattle. Really? It was a, wow. It's what's called a cattle call, which is, I wasn't an actor. I didn't know anything they call it when they just put a thing in the newspaper and say, come. And it was to audition to play uh, Tom Hanks' son, I guess. Never been in an audition in my entire life. Organized it completely myself. My great mom movie. My mom didn't know. It was great movies. And Tom Hanks is one of my heroes. Um, but absolutely nothing came of it. But I remember that was the first time I was Maybe like, yours, Megan? Uh, you know, I had had a lot of commercial auditions, but my first, when I was really giving this go, my first audition was for a film called um, A Lot Like Love, which my friend uh, Lindsay was working in the casting office for, and I went in for a girl that says hi, and I remember going into the director, and uh, literally, they're like, so can you say hi? And I said, I can, but I read the script, and I really I respond to this character, oh, and I would love to read for that. And I remember they were just like, well, this girl is certainly... Uh, has some Spunky. moxie. <laughs> yeah. Did you get the high part? I did, and then they let you me did. ad lib. And so your first audition, you got the part. Yeah. Perfect. Wow. Favorite vacation spot? 
Wow. Um, I, you know, I, my family has a place just outside Toronto, so it's very close. Yeah. It's just a cottage up in a place called Georgian Bay, and it's it's beautiful. I'm going up to people. Toronto to a lake, Muskoka. Yeah, Muskoka. Yeah, it's right near there. I'm yeah. going up there. Oh, you're going to have fun. Yeah, great, great cottage yeah, up yeah, there. Yeah, cottage beautiful. country's gorgeous. What's your favorite vacation? Oh, my goodness. Uh, there are so many, but I think um, one of my favorite places in the world is definitely... Buenos Aires, where I, I lived for a while. And you lived in Argentina. I did. It is a great city. It's a great city. It feels very European, but it still has that I'm South American that. sensibility and love. Paris life. of South America. That's exactly it. See, I know these things. <laughs> Best date night. At this point in the middle of a show, it's something really remarkably boring, like staying at home and watching a film, because we are so busy <laughs> that we never true. get any time do to do want? anything. Do you have one? Dream date night. Um, yeah, you know, I, I kind of agree. Just the idea of staying in, cooking something delicious, watching something great on TV, and doing a lot of nothing. Just home folk. Just good old homebodies. Thank you, guys. Great to meet you. Continue Thank you. success. Thank you so Thank you. much. The show is Suits. Guests are Patrick Adams and Megan, Megan Markle, and I'm Larry King, and you can follow me on Twitter at King's Things, and join us next time. Thank you.